what's up? What's up, everybody? Take my cap off. Um, I'm just here in the shop today, and I'm doing uh, some sublimation printing on these. Um, this is the next level. This is a, called a next level tri blend dolman tea. It's a really cute little tea. Um, it's about five, six bucks a pop. But anyways, I know that a lot of people um, hit me up and say that they have uh, problems with their sublimation printer. So I came in this morning. Hey, what's up, Mike? I came in this morning and to print something on my printer. And I'm actually hooked up to, I'm not hooked up to my laptop today. I'm hooked up to another, to another computer. And so I printed out this picture of this kitty. And I'm going to kind of zoom in. You notice that it's supposed to be black. Sublimation inks will, you know, they'll, they'll get darker. Your print will get darker once it's, uh, once you press it. But people are always hitting me about printer settings. So I printed this out and I was like, hmm, this doesn't look right. So I went in and I changed my printer settings and got a much darker black there. So... That's what I wanted to show everybody in uh, this video. And I'm using the 7620 uh, workforce, workforce printer to do my sublimation printing. And I just have the sublimation inks in it. So if you have problems setting up your, your sublimation uh, printer, the only thing that I did, and I don't use any like special color profiles, the difference between these two, and both of these are set on RGB black. The difference is that this is uh, controlled by the color profiles that are set up in Corel. And this one is controlled by the color profiles set up in uh, as the Epson by using the Epson uh, color profiles. Just selecting the Epson on your computer. And so that's just basically it. So now the prints will be nice and black. I'm about to do a test print on this this on this tri blend. It's got 50, uh, 50 it's a 50 50. A lot of people will tell you to use uh, 100 percent poly or whatnot, but it should come out. It should look pretty good. Um, I'm gonna actually print, do a test print on it for a customer, and I'm doing. What I'm actually doing is doing it um, as a sublimation print because they want it to be really nice and they want to see what it's going to look like before I run the whole the whole batch. Sometimes I'll use sublimation even if I turn around and I print this uh, with um, even if I turn around and I screen print it, I used to do a sublimation print first just to kind of give a person that they want to proof when they're spending a lot of money. Give them, do that, do it like that for them. So, I'm gonna show y'all in the settings. Um, I've had a lot of people who ask me about settings I and, and what inks I'm using. So, I use a company called Inks Pro. Uh, it's i n k x p r o dot com, and then I just have this. Uh, these inks installed into the system and I think I paid like $1.99 for that printer at the time that I bought it I just uh, talked to the guys over at inks pro yesterday about sending me two more um, two more uh, CSS CISS systems and um, they told me that Amazon has a special on a printer it's the 7710 which does 13 by 19 inch copies. Let me turn this heat down in here. Uh, it's 13 by 19, they do 13 by 19 inch copies. Uh, okay. It's real cold outside today, super cold. But if you get that printer, the 7710 on Amazon right now is 150 bucks. It'll only have one tray. Mine has two trays. Uh, but they have the, the other one, which is the upgrade to this one, which is the 7620. And, no, the 7720. 
and that one has the two trays so what i do i like the two trays because i can do 13 by 19 inch and then 11 by 17 inch in one um so like i said for those guys who just joined i'm doing i came in this morning doing sublimation prints and i got two different prints here so i'm on a different computer so my settings weren't right in this one, I just printed this straight out of Corel. This is black, using a black RGB, uh, straight out of Corel. And in the print settings, was using the Corel uh, print driver. So I went in, I changed that, changed the settings, no color profile set, and just used the driver from the Epson printer. That'll give you a much darker black. A lot of times people hit me and they're like, their colors aren't coming out. I'll show y'all something. If you, when you're printing, doing the sublimation prints, you need to use your RGB color palette. I use a lot of times when you, in Pantone colors, they won't come out, it won't print out good. So you always want to use RGB. And then when you go to your print settings, I also use, um, try to turn this computer around. In... Right here where it has uh, your, your your color channels and all of that, you can go in and you can change your default setting. But I normally use, and see on here, this is North American General Purpose right here on the presets. So you can go in and you can change this stuff. But right here on RGB, I always use Apple RGB. So I just always use Apple RGB. I didn't use Apple RGB on this, but that's this is on my monitor, and this is on the print settings. So on the print settings, when you go in the print right here, you go in the print, set your preferences, da 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 da, and I print on uh. I always use the, the, the matte paper setting and I always use high quality. Sometimes if, I'm, if I've only got a few shirts to do, I will use uh, just standard quality on like white or something. But if I want it to come out really dark, I use the high settings on there. And uh, I have actually have in this printer, you can go in and you can set up your settings. So you see how I already have like... 13 by 19 inch sublimation settings done. So I already have all of my settings pretty much done. Um, let's see here. So it just has the default paper mode and print styles. I don't mess with any of this. There's my color right there. This is where I'm talking about you change it. So I've got pr print composite. But right here where it says color conversions performed by, instead of having this on Corel and output as RGB, change it to your printer settings for this printer and it'll correct your correct your colors that way instead of uh, having it as, and that's all I do. So I'm about to press one of these as soon as I find a, I'm not even going to use any scissors. Um, you can use scissors. Or you can just kind of like tear around it. So I'm just going to kind of like tear around it. And some people will get that square look on their uh, sublimation prints. If you like tear around your paper, you, you won't get that square imprint on the sub print when you get ready to print it. Now, because this is a uh, this is a 50/50, I've already told my customer that when they get uh, these shirts, that they need to wash it. So they need to wash the sample, or else I'll normally wash the sample. But they're going to come get this today, uh, wash the sample, and then whatever's left after that, that's what you actually have. So let me go ahead and I have never printed on uh, this um, particular, never done a sub print. On this partic uh, particular t-shirt before so trying to get this camera settings right sit it down here so that's pretty good so a lot of people will when they're doing sublimation printing that line up and all that stuff I just kind of eyeball and go for it but before I do that I'm gonna make sure my pressure is right and my pressure is right um, 
it's something going on with my with my other machine that's back there in the back so I'm gonna use this one today so what I'm gonna do is I press at 400 degrees you're supposed to press like for a minute but I normally only do uh, about 45 seconds so hit that on there you just want to use like a medium pressure um, some shirts you can go in and put a put a piece of foam up under some people put a piece of foam under that way you don't get any of the the uh, lines in the sublimation or anything like that but I find if you don't use a lot of pressure then you won't get those lines but you got to use just enough pressure to where you uh, to where you do get the print on there but not you know any type of line around the print or anything like that so for the people who are watching do you guys um, are you guys sublimating Cause if you're not, you should be. And that did not come out too good. See, I still got a whole lot of ink on here. When I see it dark like this, then I know that I can do better. That I didn't. That I didn't pull as much of the ink off of the shirt as I could have. And you gotta remember that this is 50/50, and it is a dark. I mean, not 50/50, but this is a. Um, mm -hmm. This is a um, a uh, tri blend. Let me make sure. Yep, this is a tri blend. So on this shirt, that's what it came out like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the difference on a on a hundred percent polyester shirt. So I'm not really too happy with this one. It's a they might like it because they. They want something that looks really light and vintage, so they might, they might like it. But let's see. Let me hit another shirt. Pull out a poly shirt. Find something that's got that's a poly that polyester in it. This shirt right here is 100% polyester, so I'm going to print this on the, on the bottom of it so that I can get a judge and kind of see where my color comes out on this. And then I'll know when I get ready to go back in and do this cat. And I'm going to use the same paper. Yep, I'm going to use the same paper. So, push that there on. I'm judging my pressure that way I know if it's just the shirt that's not taking the ink well or if it's the or if I need to really adjust my pressure on it or I may need to go to the back and the other thing is I'm gonna tell y'all something else my my uh, geo night press does a lot better on sublimation than this press oh I just realized what my problem is the reason that that print didn't come out good is because my temperature is not at a hundred which I thought I had it set at a hundred and it's not all of that makes a big difference so um, I'll actually do that same shirt again but I'll do it at um I can't be in here messing up these shirts but I'll do it um, wait till the heat heats up and do it at a hundred percent so that pop that opened up. Now let me tell y'all something. Sometimes you'll get like a fuzz. If you when you raise your heat press up, uh, your paper up off of your press, sometimes you'll get a fuzz if it moves while it's still hot. So sometimes you might need to use some heat tape. I don't, but you can. So there's the print there off of the off of using that same paper the second time. That's it right there. 
and that's really pretty much what I want. This would be a little bit darker probably if it was, if I hadn't used the paper twice, but I actually like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to let this heat up to 400. It's still heating. So once that heats up to 400, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to press this again and try to get me another, um, I'm going to try to get this to come out a little bit darker on there. Uh, another tip that I have is, like, if you're sublimating, if you lay your, if you use a Teflon sheet, don't use Teflon sheet when you're sublimating because the Teflon your design will actually sublimate onto the Teflon. So like I lay this here and then I lay this print backwards on here, that design will actually sublimate onto the Teflon. And then when you get ready to do your next print and you, or you get ready to use this Teflon sheet again, then you'll, you'll have that print on that Teflon and it'll get on your shirt and make your shirt dirty, make you mess up the shirt. So I don't do that again then why is this printer not going to this machine gone up to 400 okay it should be set come on Just letting this go up. There we go. So I just got to let that go up to 400. Once that gets up to 400, then I will go back and press this sheet. This is some old stuff I had on the bottom, so I got to cut it off. This will be easy money for me. If I could just sublimate it. It's easy money if I screen print. What am I talking about? Either way. Whatever the client wants. Makes me happy. I'll put that over to the side. Oh, I've got a bunch of numbers today. That I've got to do. Up in here. What y'all doing out there? Y'all working today? Or y'all barely working? We've got, um, I don't know why my phone isn't ringing. I haven't heard my phone ring in a couple of days. And I don't know if it's what it is, if I've got my cell phone uh, not hooked up to the answering service or what. But I ain't been getting no calls. But I've been busy, though. And you guys have been busy? I'm just over there waiting on that heat press to heat up. If y'all want to say anything to me or any, talk about anything, um, I'll chat. There we go. Okay. Ain't nobody on the YouTube today. Whew. It's cold outside. We were they were thinking that it was gonna be snow here in Dallas, but it didn't snow. But yesterday the lights went out and who bailed up out of here as soon as they did was me. I've gotta do a bunch of numbers today with different names. People will bring me jobs that they don't wanna do. So I've gotta do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen names. And each name probably has about 12 shirts a piece. So I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do it in vinyl or if I'm going to screen print it. Is it heated up? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm to 390. I've got a little ways before I do it. I might come on here and screen print today. 
might get the screen print today. I'm having some issues. How can I save my fonts from my fonts from fonts.com to my computer? Let's see, fonts.com. Monotype. Let's see here. Hmm, I've never been on fonts.com before. So are these fonts on fonts.com? Um, are they for sale or what? Let me look at them. Oh, these are these are for sale. I see they've got a thing on here that says buy it for free. You can go on there and try it for free for free. Why don't you try uh defunt.com? Okay, I see where it is. So, where it says free, do you hit try for free? Let me hit one. It's asking for an email and a password. I don't know. I don't use that. I don't use that website. I don't use sites that I don't know um, anything about. Let me put in the name of a font and see. If, uh, but you can go to defont.com, uh, Robert. Um, I use defont and a couple of other ones. Most of my fonts, I've got tons of fonts in the computer. So what I do is I have a folder and it's called just all fonts. And then, uh, go in here and see. I have a font file on the computer and I it's actually uploaded onto the site. This is defont.com here. So on defunt.com, if you want to download something, let me kind of sit this sit this down. If you want to download something on this website, there is there's just a download button, and you just download, hit download, and it'll it'll just pop up, and you can just save it to your computer, and then unzip it. And then put it in a file in a folder on 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 the uh, internet, on your OneDrive or your Google Drive or whatever like that. That's what I do. And I've got, I've probably got thousands on there. And then I get you know fonts from other people and stuff like that. Oh, Fort Worth, is it cold out there today? Oh, let's see here. So I got this. Let's see if it's okay. I'm at 3.97, so I should be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and up up the time on this too. Sometimes it's all about finding um, the right pressure and the right time. On this stuff. Boom, 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 boom. So what I'm gonna do? Let's go back over here and I'll try to hit this again. And hopefully, yeah, Robert, I do. I have classes coming. I've got classes. Uh, all my classes for the year are actually listed on the website now on Latana.com. I'm go here and print this one, see what that looks like. And hopefully, this is why I do test prints. This order right here is like 700 shirts, so we can't be, can't be playing with these people. Got to get it right. Got to do some test prints on this, see if they're going to be able to sub it. My website is my first name, L-A-T-O-N-N-A dot com. And if you look here on the on the um, on the YouTube channel, it should be in the description. This is gonna go off early but I'm counting it off in my head I'm gonna leave this on here for about a minute because
because I've closed it down and changed the time. So y'all going to have to listen to this annoying sound with me for about 30 more seconds, okay? Almost done. There we go. There we go. So I peel that up. That sucker's hot. So this shirt is just not going to get any darker. It's just not going to get any darker with this. So then this. That's about it. And so now what we're going to do. This is when I get to the fun part. After I do this, I'm going to go in there because I'm looking at the shirt and I'm like, okay, they may, they may like it like that because it's not a real dark print, but it, it has that vintage look. So what I do before I sell anybody anything from a shirt that I've never printed on before is I go in the restroom and I'm going to wash this sucker. actually do all of this. So, we're actually thinking about getting a, um, getting a uh, washer and dryer here at the shop so I can do stuff like this. So I can test on this type of stuff. I'm going to sit this, sit this down up here and I'll move the camera down so you guys can see me wash the heck out of it. Let's see. Yeah, that's good enough. So what I like to do is I like to uh, actually go in and wash the shirt because with sublimation, y'all know that it's only going to stick to the fibers, to the cotton fibers. And we've got, in this shirt, we've got cotton polyester and rayon so I always want to do a test print on the first shirt and my customer paid like 50 bucks to have a test print done so it's not like I'm wasting time when I'm doing these test prints just always want to make sure you give them something that they that they really like that they gonna come back for. Print didn't leave. It's still in there. No fading. So I'm gonna take this back there, run it through dry a couple of times. I'm gonna show it to y'all once I squeeze out a little bit more of this water. be dark because the shirt is um, wet but you can still see the print this is what it's gonna so once you wash it like your sublimation print that first time whatever you got honey that's it it's gonna stay there forever so I'm gonna take this back in there let it dry y'all see I got trash all over my floor I need to clean up in here. Hopefully I don't have anybody in here today to come in here and get on my nerves. So what I'm going to do is take this shirt. Now this shirt is wet, okay? I'm burning it now. Saying, what the hell is she doing? That's how I go to drying stuff real fast so I can really see if the print is gone or if the print is still there and it's still there. So, that's just my way of knowing real fast. And I'll let this dry and then after it's dry, I'm going to call them over to get it. And now I'm going to go to the back. And uh, and actually, I do see a little bit of fade on that. 
from what we had from what we had earlier you can see a little fade they want a really really understated print so we'll see what they think about it and uh, I'm gonna go to the back and I'm gonna I'm gonna screen print it now because they're gonna get one sample of what it's gonna look like actually screen printed with a dark print on it and then a sample of uh, what it's gonna look like this is a I'm gonna screen print it and I'm gonna use this ink right here which is this is a union ink and it's a union uh, ultra soft so you can't even really feel feel the print I can't feel it at all on here it's been washed a couple of times so they may end up going with this if they want it to be a dark black so I'm gonna go back there I'm gonna screen print that and see which one to go with I actually have this order actually has like three different types of shirts but I don't have the other t-shirts here that I'm gonna do Let's see here. Mm -hmm. So I was doing a um I was actually practicing on color separations in Corel Draw and using the um the mass tool to do a lot of stuff. I've been I've been going in I see that a lot of people are working in Photoshop, so I was going in and trying some different ways of uh, printing stuff. I pulled up um, Beyonce, and uh, not that I ain't going to screen print Beyonce, y'all. I'm just using Beyonce as an example. I pulled a picture of her and um, using using uh in corral i'll probably put up a video later on how i screen how to color separate do a color separation uh, of a photograph of and print like a person because y'all know black people are like the skin tones getting the tones on the skin right it's kind of hard sometimes so i was thinking that I'll do a, I'm trying to see if I can pull up the picture that I had found of her. It was actually a music. It was a perfect picture to screen print too. Oh, let's see if I can find it. Mm, now I don't see it. Oh, that's great. Well, it's in my laptop, so I'll pull it up. If you guys have anything that you want, like, me to show you guys how to color separate and stuff like that. Because sometimes I have hard times finding pictures and things that I think people want to see. Then send it over to me. Email me something and say, hey, show us how to do this or how to do that in Corel. And I'll, I'll do that. And, um... Cause this one picture of Beyonce that I did pull up I was gonna color separate with a black background show how to print it how to pull the black out of it and just separate it and print it on black I'm not finding anything now well I'm gonna get on off of here um, it doesn't seem like it's any questions today y'all tell me what y'all want to hear um, there go a question Lining up the transfers on the t-shirts. Um, what I do is when I'm lining up, because you know most t-shirts are not the collars. I don't go by the collar. I don't use I don't use a T-square or anything like that when I'm lining up. And most of my shirts, like the gilded shirts, will have that line in the middle, but most of them don't. I'll go over here and kind of show you what I do I just don't overthink it um, online and stuff up I just kind of go for it 
but so let's say if I was going to print this shirt right here the first thing that I would do is I would press it so that it's even so that I know that it's even I don't really go off of these collars and, and this here because most of the time that's not in the center even the tag is not in the center sometimes so when I set it up there I just kind of eyeball it I eyeball my print and I put it in the center. And when I what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the space that let's see if I can turn this down. I may go like this. So when I'm putting it up here and I do this, then and I don't know if you can see at the angle that you're at, but I'm putting my fingers are out. And so I can see that this this space here is a finger width and this space here is a finger width um on this particular shirt so i can kind of like see that there and i kind of eyeball i'm coming like three fingers down so i just pretty much eyeball it and then i sit it there and then another thing that you can do is go off the bottom go off the bottom of your t-shirt as far as looking at it to see if it's straight because normally the bottom of the shirt is straight and the top of the shirt is not some people the other thing you can do is what ken does when he's when he's doing something he drops that whole top where the collar is he drops the whole thing over the press so once he gets that over the press then he's got a straight line so he'll drop this down, and he and now he knows that he's right here at this center point. He drops that down, and then he'll align it and put his design on from there, and then go down. The thing is to not just to overthink it, but if I know I use this press as a guideline, if I know it's two fingers or however wide my press is, if I know my press is like my picture and I come out four fingers or I can go two fingers I can go one finger some presses you know depending on the size of the press I hope you understand that um, that I'm explaining it to you in a way that you can understand it but that's what I do I see a lot of people use rulers I don't use rulers I go straight on in hit it there and I'm lining up with my fingers Do you line up transfers on the shirts? I keep getting them crooked. Okay. If you have new blanks, there's a center on the shirts that's almost invisible. Um, on my blanks, I don't use a lot of my my next level shirts. Most of my shirts don't come with they don't they don't have a, a center line on them. You will when you have like the neck the uh the gilding shirts. Let me see. Um see if y'all can see on the guild this is the gilding shirt and what what he's talking about is you'll have a little center line on the gilding shirts and you barely can see it on these because these you just barely can see it but on some of them you can but on if you get like next level brand you won't see you won't see any center line marks at all because they're not folded they have side seams so you won't see, you won't see it on all of the brands so you can't go you can't go by that you've got what i was saying robert about about measuring it with your hands from this space to this space i do the same thing on press sometimes i just throw stuff on there i don't i don't i don't line it up like that i'll just line it up by eye Y'all got any questions? What's going on? Uh, let's see here. What you been up to, Jason? What you got going on today? You working? Ooh. Man, I can't find this picture that I did of Beyonce nowhere. Let me go into my other office. Let's see. 
care. Okay, I'm in the other office. I changed my room, my office around. Let me kind of show y'all. Because whenever I come into the office, I would, so this is the view now when, when people walk in. So now I can put, I can actually like sit my customers over to this side and not have to step around them. And then I can walk back here if I need to go, get up and go back over. The only thing about that is now I can't see what they're doing back there in the back, which they probably like that, you know. Uh, let's see here. So let me pull up this picture that I'm working on uh, with Miss Beyonce. I'm not going to really do it. You know what? I really like the house better. I, I like, uh, well, what I do like is I like um, having everything in, in in one building where I don't have to go from like inside of that house, to, from inside the house to walk outside. But what I don't like is that I can't, it's not like I have a, a kitchen. I don't have a kitchen. But I got a microwave here. I'm about to get me a, a fridge and all that. So, but this is that picture that I'm doing of uh, Beyonce. And let me see if, so what I did is I pulled the, let me try to zoom in over there. Put that right there. So I color, I'm color separating her and I'm gonna put a background on her so just so the child can see what I'm talking about make it black so that's actually how she'll look once she's screen printed uh, put the camera where let me see what he said uh, put the camera in the back so you can watch them on the PC okay yeah so let me see how to do that can't do that. I don't know how to do that. When I hit the rotate mode, it won't rotate. So, yeah, it won't rotate. But that's the image. Um, I got to go in and do some stuff to it. I couldn't see yesterday when I was, let me see if I, if I have, I was just playing around. This is another image I'm playing with, playing around with different, with different images, color sep, doing color seps and stuff like that. Um, I don't even see this this original picture of Beyonce. Where is it at? Um, well, I don't know where the picture is, but I'll do a video on it once I once I sep it, and I'll probably do a do a video on it my computer screen is really really low so what I do is I have my laptop and I just have so when I come in I don't uh, that way I have always had my stuff on there oh install the workers oh yeah I'm gonna have to do something because I I can like lean forward, but I need to put. You know what? I could just put my web camera back there probably, and and watch them like that when I need to see what they back there doing. Cause you know I had I, I have caught a couple of people like I caught a guy uh, that was working and my nephew told him to they burnt some shirts and he told him he said she never comes to the bank just hide them. That was when we was over at the house, but now I'm right here where I can see everything. So I pretty much like that. I need to get some work done going. Um, this is uh, I'm working in uh, Corel in uh, 2017, and in 2017 you can do, you know, you can do a whole lot of cool stuff, change your change your layout and everything. So. 
a lot of people ask me how come my screen is black and they think I'm working in, in, in uh, Photoshop or something. But you can change all of this stuff. You can put all kind of stuff. So I love it. I've got the... Um, I got this Gildan color palette in here, and then I've got my um, my assimilated process assimilated process color palette that I built with those colors, um, and that's about it. I ain't got nothing going on today, but doing all of those prints. So I'm about to go to the back. I'm gonna get off of here, go ahead and uh, print a screen, do a screen, and. Um, go to the back and let them do a test print so that they can get going and get to work. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later.